My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people are my friends, just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1 800 743 CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. After today, the start off week before stocks came roaring back, Dow ultimately gaining 104 points, SP advancing 0.28%. And there we go, the NASDAQ rise another 0.50%. You need to know that this rally from the bottom was largely fueled by younger investors who can't resist or love it and buy the day. Oh, yeah, they love to buy when stocks are down, regardless of the news backdrop. And they've got enough clout these days to move even some of the biggest stocks going higher into the market. So what's their stock playbook, these younger people? How can you game the gamers? First, the younger buyers don't care that there's no stimulus. They don't care that we've got so many vaccines coming that scientists say we might have a vaccine glut by the end of January. High quality problem. Frankly, I'm not sure what the heck they care about, except buying up stocks that they believe will go much, much higher. Oh, they're unfettered, they're, they're unchained, they're, they're, they're believers, they're optimists. And they don't really care about traditional metrics of valuation. When they have faith in something, they're willing to pay up regardless. If that sounds crazy to you and undisciplined, I get it. But at this point, these younger investors have made so much money that you need to take them seriously. Maybe more seriously even than the old-fashioned hedge fund managers and strategists who are always willing to tout their positions and, more important, their hesitations or tell you to get out now on a day when the market goes down. These new stock pickers have a different approach. And, and for months, that approach has been working. Sure, it flies in the face of the conventional wisdom. But what has the conventional wisdom done for you lately? In the end, we need to be the ones who adjust. Not them. Not totally adjust, but we have to understand them. You know why? One word. Tesla. The stock of Tesla is now up 677% for the year. And that move has changed everything. Everything about the way people invest. Tesla is now a $616 billion enterprise, making it the sixth largest business in America. Yet it only plans to make up half a million cars this year. I could use any number of analogies to explain why Tesla doesn't deserve this lofty valuation. Well, it's not just bigger than Ford or GM. It's bigger than Ford, GM, Toyota, Fiat, Chrysler, Daimler, whatever. But this new generation of stock pickers, they don't think that, that, that. That's too small. I'm not being cynical. They certainly aren't cynical. You see, they believe. What do they believe? Well, they believe that Elon Musk is a genius. Seems reasonable. And they want to stick with him. And his technology company, notice it said technology company, with its green orientation as he takes over the world. Of course, you can't quantify something like that, so they just buy the stock. I mean, given the performance, though, I mean, who's to say they're wrong? I mean, you could argue Tesla keeps going up on nothing. I disagree. Today, Elon Musk announced that his company is selling $5 billion worth of shares over time. He's done that before. It's his third time. Continue offering. What happens? Well, of course, initially, the stock takes a dip as people, they're frantic. They get out. Incredibly high volume. But then what happens? Well, it goes down and down. And then it U-turns. Then it goes higher. Then it goes higher. Then it goes higher. It goes higher still. And then it finishes up eight bucks for an astounding 62 million shares. The idea that a stock could actually rally after announcing a big equity offering, even if it will be dribbled out, seems totally insane to anyone who's been in this business longer than one year. To conventionalize creating $5 billion with a new stock to lose your existing shareholders, that's bad, right? It means the stock uh, you have will be worth less. But younger investors could care less about dilution. As they see it, Musk raising more money to fulfill their dreams, and they went in on those dreams. If Tesla's new Berlin plan is success, hey, maybe he'll build another one in Italy, right next to Lamborghini. Or maybe he'll put one up in Detroit to show up the old guard. He can use that money to take the solar division to new heights, perhaps building a giant solar field in northwest Colorado that could power the entire country. Hey, don't laugh. When Musk suggested this idea at a dinner party we went to to, uh, several years ago, I criticized it in front of others as pie in the sky. That's why he looked at me and said there was a 50% chance that I was just a simulation and not a real person. Who knows? If he raises enough money and gets to work on his plan, maybe we're all living in the Matrix and I... (laughs) I am just a simulation. I mean, it could be. I mean, he's, a, he's a smart fella, isn't he? 
All right, what matters, though, is that Musk's using the stock market for its actual original purpose, to raise money. Better than debt, by the way. And these young investors, they lap it up. The fact that Tesla can offer $5 billion worth of stock without damaging its share price, that's insanely bullish. That's a real market. That's not what we call a thick market. Of course, it's not just Tesla. There's a whole host of stocks that don't seem to have any ceiling because these younger investors keep buying and then buying and then buying some more. You know what? I'm going to just show you some paradigms of the playbook. Let's call it that. Paradigms of the playbook. And, and so you get a sense of what they're doing. And these all work. I do enough, do enough homework to know that these are working for younger people. I've got others. From time to time, we're going to see them all. But first, there is Roku. Now, that's the ultimate cord cutting play because they're the ultimate cord cutters. New investors love this because they know streaming is the future of television. Roku's up only 128% for the year, but they seem to have an affinity for it anyway, perhaps because they love using the platform to stream content directly to their TVs. Second, the next generation of investors love to shop online, specifically on Etsy or retail websites powered by Shopify. They want crafts, right? Uh, They want empowerment. Instead of paying a credit card, they got PayPal. I don't know how high these stocks can go because they're now divorced from traditional valuation metrics by far. Instead, they're more like totems that let you participate in the success of the whole craft chain. It's as much an ethos as it is an industry. These names actually remind me of Netflix and Amazon way back when, which represent alternative traditional entertainment and traditional mall shopping. Again, like Tesla or Roku, they're rebellion stocks. Think of that word, rebellion. These younger investors love that rebel aesthetic. A missed quarter here, a shortfall there. These don't mean anything to these new stock pickers because they don't buy into all that Wall Street gibberish anyway. The spreadsheet nonsense, will you give me a break? It's not about expectations to them. It's about the future. They laugh at the whole pretense that we take seriously. When they see a long-term thesis, they like it. They'll stick with it forever. They're not flippers. Sure, there's lots of options to buy, but these are people who are not going to blow out a stock because it misses by two cents. They don't even know what sense is. Uh, CEN test. You know what? Okay, here's another one. You know what these people love? They love cybersecurity. They love Kramer family fave Okta. Zscaler is one of their absolute favorites. They're going nuts for Palo Alto Network's CrowdStrike. Are you kidding me? This one's hard to figure out, though. I mean, do they know hackers? I mean, I doubt it. Do they see the software at their jobs? I mean, maybe. All I know is that they love these things, especially Okta, of course, up 118%. For you. That's the first one to turn. Every time you ever see the market go down, watch Okta. If it turns, that market's going to have a rally, okay? The Nasdaq will rally. I can't fault them for piling into the cybersecurity names as a whole industry is making a fortune thanks to the stay-at-home economy. Again, understand, these are smart. They're not dumb. These people aren't fools. They're not dumb. Stop, stop denigrating them. Stop looking down at them. Meanwhile, they still love Zoom video, but they were <laughs> there were enough old school investors in Zoom to drive the stock down when they started worrying about gross margin degradation. Hey, with Zoom in the doghouse, the kids have found a new one. They love Ring Central, the call center software play with its own video conferencing platform. There are other other ones they can't get enough of. Virgin Galactic. I mean, you know, this is like investing in Star in Star Trek. I mean, they love it. The insanely speculative space tourism stock. Maybe they have a Jules Verne complex. Oh, and then there's the latest fascination. Snowflake. I mean, they love Snowflake. Now, I struggle to figure out if they know Snowflake because they've seen how it has changed the way companies analyze data. You don't need to have a study of computer science at Stanford anymore to be a data analyst when your company's got Snowflake. Maybe these younger investors just like the momentum in the stock or even the name. I mean, you've been Snowflaked. But I think there's more substance behind it. Of course, younger people can be fickle. They fell in love with Palantir, the security software firm, at 10, and then they fell out of love at 30. Oh, they talk about love, Fiverr, ha- HubSpot. D- don't ask me why. Um, they go for anything electric vehicles, anything hydrogen, plug, ballard, fuel, you name it. If it's got hydrogen in it, it's going higher. But the bottom line, I wanted to give you the beginning of their playbook. And I am going to come back again and again because I respect them. OK, I'm not cynical. I'm not being sardonic. I respect them. You know why? Because while these buyers may be young, we're in a market where callow youth has an edge over their cynical elders. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. 
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.